I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, recorded on March 26th, 2015. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths Finder themes, one theme at a time. And today's theme is adaptability. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you. It's right below the main video window on our live page. So if you're at coaching.gallup.com slash live. By the way, you might want to have a pen and paper out during the, 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 the webcast because it's going to be some great stuff that you're going to want to write down. That's one of them, coaching.gallup.com slash live. We do these webcasts live out there. If you, have, if you have those questions, you can join us live in the chat room. If it's after the fact, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. If you're listening to the recorded version, a custom strength solution, coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations. Again, you can contact us, coaching at gallup.com. And of course, don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. That's just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your coaching resources and training needs, including a complete list of all our certified coaches that are available around the world. So if you were looking for a directory that had all the coaches, maybe one in your area, you might want to stop at the Gallup Strength Center for that. You can also catch the video in both streaming and now downloadable audio for offline listening. If you want to recapture these, you can't join us live. It'd be great to have you join us uh, just on the downloaded version. Audio and video versions are both available. Everything's out, coaching.gallup.com. Kurt Liesfeld is our host today. Kurt works as a senior learning and development consultant with Gallup here on the riverfront, although he's coming to us from Liesfeld Pond out in Lincoln, Nebraska today. Kurt, welcome to another Theme Thursday. It's great to be here, Jim. It's uh, it's beautiful on Leesfelt Pond today. I'm looking out the window, and I'm excited uh, for our uh, theme of the day, adaptability. And I'm really excited to have our our theme Thursday guest, Scott Wright, who is. Uh, uh, an associate of mine at Gallup. Some of you, some of our listeners might know his wife better than they know you, Scott. You play a mm, role true. a little more behind the scenes. Heather Wright uh, is a, also a senior learning and development consultant who leads many of our programs and has led many of our coaching programs as well. So this is uh, Heather's other half here, and uh, so I'm glad that I'm looking forward to having people get to meet you, Scott. No, oh, thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about adaptability as the uh, the theme of the day here, and uh, this is a theme that really is comfortable and responsive in changing situations and environments. Uh, I think one of the things that distinguishes people is their how they relate to variance and variety, and the adaptable person is someone who's more on the side of, I kind of like variance, I kind of like variety. Um, it's interesting, this domain, this theme falls in the relationship building domain, and uh, I think it also could fit conceptually in the executing domain. It's how people go about their work, but I think the why it's in relationship domain is, I think people who have adaptability are usually a little calmer than the rest of us in changing in environments. And I think that has a positive effect. And I think we're attracted to people because of their calmness. So people probably, one of the reasons people probably like Scott is he has a, has a calming influence uh, when, uh, when there are times of stress. We'll let him comment on that later if that's true or not. I don't know. Um, some, we often talk about uh, some words that kind of uh, get at the essence of a theme, nouns and adjectives. Uh, one of the themes that I came up with or nouns is first responder. These are people who are responsive and people who kind of jump into situations that need some help. They're first responders. Another phrase might be an early adopter. Again, people who kind of embrace change maybe quickly because they, they like change. Uh, people who are, are, are willing to, uh, this, this doesn't sound quite as sexy sometimes, but these are people who know how to follow. They, they know how to follow the situation. They know how to kind of go along with the environment sometimes, and that can be important. I think it's people who are situationally aware, and maybe I would say people who really sometimes love change. And, and I often say they, they say uh, change is around forever. So I think this theme has some really some real advantages sometimes in, in a world that is constantly changing. And there are lots of environments in, in our world where change is really the, the primary currency. Uh, adjectives that we might uh, put with adaptability would be like flexible, responsive, easygoing, present, in the moment, spontaneous, 
agreeable, and my favorite, existential. <laughs> That's kind of a big word, but I like that word. They really, and I'll we can talk more about that if if existential works for you or not, Scott. Um, what this theme looks like in its raw form might be my attention span is short. <laughs> That's, I think, what raw, and it will be interesting to hear if Scott had a short attention span when he was 10 years old. <laughs> um, what it looks like in a more mature form is this. My intense real-time awareness helps me to respond with immediacy. That sounds more mature and more productive, and I think that's ultimately what it can bring. I think it's interesting to think about the relationships between uh, this theme and some other themes. And some, some themes where I see connections is, uh, uh, for example, I think a theme like uh, a ranger could actually intensify the adaptability of a person. Um, a partner, when, when you put a ranger with uh, adaptability, it, it effectively, the, the, this partner effectively manages organizations and team chains through interaction, involvement, and influence. So I think when you add a ranger to adaptability, it brings some control to the responsiveness. It brings uh, um, a bit of control to that. Uh, also, you could add empathy to adaptability. An empathetic partner brings an awareness of the emotional implications and the repercussions of change. Even though a person with adaptability enjoys change, they know that not everybody likes change. And so they might be, and it's interesting, I think Scott has empathy pretty high, so it'll be, that might be a fun one to talk about if he's, how his sensitivity to people's emotions helps him in, in times of change. Um, uh, there are also some themes that could moderate adaptability. I don't think he has this particular theme, but for example, a discipline. So uh, if if you uh, when you add discipline to adaptability, whether it's inside of a person or a partnership, a person or partner with this theme brings order and predictability to the chaos that is always associated with change. So that br would bring a bit more. It would, it would moderate adaptability if a person had both discipline and adaptability. Um, let, uh, this is a th another good word, I think, that goes with adaptability. Have you, have you heard, the, ever heard the phrase carpe diem? It's kind of this Latin word, seize the day. <laughs> I think it was uh, Robin Williams who kind of made it famous in a movie he had. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's it's really Latin for seize the day. And what it really means more literally is to pluck or pick the day because it's like ripe fruit. It's like, you know, fruit is only ripe at its best for a short time. I just think that's a great kind of way to think about uh, adaptability. Um, let's see. Maybe let me get into some of the numbers. Sometimes people are kind of interested in that as well. Uh, frequency in top five, 17 percent of our database have adaptability in its top five in terms of the rank order, and it's in eighth place. It's the eighth most frequent theme. So there's, you know, a pretty good amount of adaptability in our database. Uh, the theme that is most likely paired with adaptability is empathy. So that makes some sense. These the people who are aware of what's going on around them are often aware of how people are feeling. People who are have situational awareness often have emotional awareness. So those could be things. The theme that is least likely paired with adaptability is focus. And, and that makes some sense to kind of focus is kind of a more of a goal orientation, of course, more of a single-mindedness, whereas I think of adaptability as almost having like a 360 view around them. <laughs> they can kind of, it, it's all kind of encapsulated in today, but it's a 360, the circle is today, and I can see all around today. I'm really present in that particular moment. So, um, I think that's enough for our theme overview here uh, and uh, theme overture. So let's get Scott into the conversation. So, Scott, did you have a short attention span? <laughs> <laughs> as, as a child, yeah. I think if you went back and asked my parents, uh, 
there were uh, a, a couple of different things. Number one, he talks too much. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was a, a common theme from my teachers was, uh, yeah, he, he talks too much. He needs to be quiet in class, which, you know, looking at it from a strengths point of view was my communication, which is number yep. five coming out. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So there was probably a more positive way my teachers could have uh, looked at that. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, the attention span also and, and, not, and, and that lack of, you know, focusing on, on specific things was, was definitely there too. But I know that you you were uh, successful as a student. You you graduated mm -hmm. from law school. You exactly. you're you're, a, you're an attorney. Mm -hmm. So how how did you how were you successful as a student with a short attention span? You must yeah. have managed that somehow. Yeah, and I think it was uh, breaking things up into smaller chunks. Um, okay. Not not sitting down and having you know especially through law school, not having six hour long study sessions on one topic. Um, breaking it up maybe into smaller chunks or chapters or or something, and and jumping from one to the other, from one uh, class to the other, and and topic to the other, and kind of playing with that adaptability and 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 honing that so that. I didn't get bored or out of focus when I was studying. So, so jumping, I like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good metaphor. J jumping around is good for some people. It, exactly. it helped you be a better, would you say it helped you be a better student? I, I, for, for me, yes. Uh, for someone who doesn't have adaptability, <laughs> jumping around would probably drive them crazy. And yeah. that's, you know, that's the, that's the difference between individuals. But but yeah, I for me jumping around and 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 jumping into something and then jumping to something else was 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 very good for me. So how do you jump around today? In your you have a I think maybe one of the most interesting roles of people in in our company. <laughs> you have uh, you put you wear lots of different hats. You have lots of different expertises that mm -hmm. you bring. Why don't you just tell people a little bit about the variety of your role at Gallup? Sure. Sure. I, I have probably about four or five different hats that I wear at Gallup, four or five different roles. My main role is that I'm a contract services administrator with our education practice. And so mm -hmm. I'm responsible for uh, writing proposals and doing marketing to help grow our education practice, the work that Gallup does with school districts and colleges and universities around the uh, around the. Uh, a secondary role that I have is I'm an event producer and I work with our events team and I will do everything from writing scripts to helping produce videos, audio voiceovers. I do a lot of audio voiceover. Um, a, a, a little uh, kind of nickname that I have around here is the, the voice of Gallup and <laughs> yeah. uh, many uh, different uh, recordings. Uh, if you call into our help desk, I'm the voice on our help desk recording and, <laughs> and uh, for 15, 18 years now, I've, I've been the voice of God in, inside of our <laughs> events, the, the big booming voice that tells people to sit down and be quiet. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've done a lot of that work. So it, that stuff too, that live event production fits in really well with my adaptability. Being, being in control of, a, of a, a room of six or seven hundred people where we've got videos going, we've got people at the podium, we've got to get microphones in the right place, we've got to get lighting cues right. All of that stuff really fits in well with the adaptability. Uh, another role that I have at Gallup is with my legal background, I do some work with our intellectual property and I help manage uh, the proper use of our intellectual property both internally and externally with, with Gallup clients and others who uh, who do some of those things. Uh, then I also uh, lead tours of the building for Gallup clients when they come in. I'm a tour guide for our building, our campus here in Omaha. So there's a lot of different, uh, different things that I do. You know, it seems like a big part of what you do is probably about your communication talent. I mean, when sure. I think about the the voice the the writing the mm -hmm. language uh, even intellectual property has a has a kind of a communication part to it so that's certainly part of it i was just sure. thinking do you have any examples of like especially these live productions where something didn't go well and you had to adapt <laughs> yeah there there's been quite a few now luckily the, the audience doesn't always see it because they yeah, don't know yeah. what was supposed to happen. <laughs> so we, uh, we can kind of hide them a little bit sometimes. Um, but yeah, there are uh, multiple times throughout the, the years where, where someone who's supposed to be next on stage cannot be found. We can't, we can't find them. So we either have to drop them out and bring in the next person 
person or we have to somehow stall for some time and you know we can't communicate with the speaker who's on stage right now uh, so you can't tell them to stall so we got to get creative with some of those things and we've had so to what do are, past. what are you like in those moments what's kind of going through your head what's what kind of emotions are you feeling in those situations I know I here's I know what I would feel like <laughs> in those situations <laughs> I would be pulling my hair out and I would be kind of are, well, are you calm in those situations or calmer than most most people? That's exactly where I was going to go. That and you brought that up earlier. That calmness. Uh, I have I have a, yes a a, a very uh, overwhelming calmness that comes over me, and and I don't get excited. I don't get worked up. I don't uh, get frazzled. I I can stay calm in that situation and start thinking through the options and the possibilities. And then uh, again, that arranger theme comes in. Arranger for me is is number one on my uh, uh, top five. So that arranger thing partnered with that adaptability allows me to just start looking across the available options and how we can how we can solve this issue that we're looking at right now. And does that have, I mean, I think I think part of your own calmness can have a calming effect on others. Would you mm -hmm. say people say that about you, that uh, you have a calming effect? Yeah, I've, I've heard that many, many times throughout my life. Um, many of the folks on the on the webcast today will, uh, will know this. Um, Heather and I are the proud parents of four children, three of which happen to be triplets. Uh, so we've had we have four children and two pregnancies. Uh, we have triplets. Uh, so obviously that was a big life change. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, having having triplets and finding out we were having triplets and preparing for triplets. Uh, obviously, I got a lot of people saying, "Wow, you're just so calm. You're just so easygoing about this." You know, I would be really worried or excited, uh, excited in in maybe a scared way, not a not a happy way. I obviously was happy about it. Uh, but then, as our triplets were about two years old, uh, we discovered uh, that uh, while pregnant with our fourth child, uh, that he a had a significant heart condition that was going to require open heart surgery fairly soon after birth and uh, B that he was uh, also a child with Down syndrome and so getting that news all at once in this you know span of just a, a few short weeks really to so to speak and then going through uh, a, a, a you know his birth and then at three months old Nick went in for open heart surgery and through all of those changes of, of raising triplets and, and dealing with being a parent of a special needs child and then throwing in on top of it the you know open heart surgery on a three month old uh, child is is you know a lot for any one person to handle certainly but mm -hmm. Through a lot of those things, uh, people just kept saying, I can't believe how calm you are. I can't believe how you just have a sense of ease and a sense of, of positivity in your ease that, that comes out. And I think that was the adaptability. Yeah, so you attribute that to, to that. Mm -hmm. and, and what can you say what it is about the adaptability? Is it... Uh, is it that you just think about today? We're going to make this. At we're going to do this one day at a time. Exactly. We're going to, a day at a time, and we're not going to think about you know the future implications. I, I yeah. think sometimes. Uh, I think what happens for some of us is we we anticipate. You can anticipate all the good stuff, but you can also anticipate all the bad stuff, and you bring that mm -hmm. back to today. That gets to mm -hmm. be a pretty pretty heavy burden, and so. It, it, Living day, living living one day at a time has some advantages. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. There's there you, you said the word I think earlier situational awareness. There's, there's an awareness that I I feel in in every moment. You know I'm I'm very tuned into every moment of every day that is I'm I'm not thinking about the future. Uh, you know one of the things about me is is it's maybe a little unique I don't know but I can't set goals I can't look into the future and set goals for myself I can't whether it be work uh, career or family or whatever I, I, I just don't have that ability it, it just it is nearly impossible for me to set goals but I also have I think a more heightened awareness of what's going on right now versus other people who, who don't have adaptability because I'm able to to experience today and what's happening right now better than maybe some other people are. 
You know, and I think that is, as I, I have thought about this, it's really something that philosophers have talked quite about of and, and, and writers and authors. I was looking at some quotes here, and I've got a couple of them on here. Emily Dixon. Dickinson, you know, we all studied her in sure. in uh, American literature, and she said, "Forever, forever is composed of nows." <laughs> <laughs> I, like I think I think she might have had some adaptability, and then yeah. uh, Henry David Thoreau, another one that I remember from American literature here. You must live in the present, launch yourself on every wave, find your eternity in each moment. Fools mm -hmm. stand the, on their island of opportunity and look toward other another land. There is no other land. There is no other life but this. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times philosophers and writers are often trying to help most of us do this what you seem to do pretty naturally to mm -hmm. kind of live in the moment yeah yeah and I, I think that's uh, you know the that, that live in the moment the live in the time like I say I the adaptability we said it kind of at the beginning of the show here that a lot of people think it's that you just kind of have no direction you just kind of float through life and and you don't really have a you know you, you use the word follower and, and I would totally agree uh, as a as a, as m for myself I'm not someone who is the leader or who wants to be the leader but I will be one of the absolute best followers that you have and will help you get a lot done as as a follower some some people have asked me in my life you know especially with the four kids uh, why don't you be the head coach of uh, basketball team or something like that for your kids. I'm not a head coach person. That's I, I, I'm not that type of a person, but I'll help you. I'll be your assistant. I'll do whatever you know you need me to do as an assistant and I'll be a you know a really strong partner to you that way. But as the the ultimate leader that's you know that's not something that fits well with with me. And Kurt, I'll, I'll say, you know, Scott and I have worked together now for a year and some change mm -hmm. here on these webcasts, and, and perfect description of Scott has come in and just will do whatever I need him to do when I need him to do it to fill in for me or to, you know, we're working on a new show or some of those kinds of things, and so he's just been really good. He'll do anything. And and do it very be very flexible in the process of doing it. So this is a perfect real example of the two of us working together to kind of make this happen. We both have a Ranger number one, which mm -hmm. I didn't realize until just now, Scott. That, <laughs> that. And so th we fit together well there. But his adaptability and my activation, I'll activate mm -hmm. on these things and bring Scott along for, in yep. the process. And so somebody yeah. asked a question in chat. Um, you, you, Scott, you had mentioned about not having that piece where you, the goal setting piece. Mm -hmm. And so I think our partnership is one of those where, where that works because I'll push it forward. Yep. You'll, you'll get it going. And then you have responsibility for me to make sure it's the right thing to do. I can't tell you how many times I've come to you and said, Hey Scott, I got some questions <laughs> on this. How should we really do this? Some of it's your, your legal background, but yeah. it really depend on your responsibility. So I think, um, I think that kind of answers that question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, it's there. It's it's flexibility with integrity. I mean, mm -hmm. those two things go together in him, and I think that that adds value. I think it adds value to integrity to be flexible, but it adds value to the flexibility when you add integrity to that. And so, you know, one of the uh, I was just going to mention one of the one of the descriptions of adaptability that I was reading um, in my own uh, my own reports, uh, and maybe it was one of our books. I can't remember, but it used the example of a palm tree and a palm tree is you know it it has the flexibility to bend yeah. in the gale force winds but it's still strong it's still a strong tree and yeah. it will still stand up um, and that you know going back to kind of our change and, and managing change in life and in in career and all that you know I have the ability to to stay strong through change and I, I kind of like change and I, I enjoy changing things and I can help other people and I can pull them along through change uh, because I can show them the, the how it's so good and, and the, the good that's going to come out of it I don't dwell on on the fear or dwell on the the you know kind of the bad things that come that people have with change but that palm tree you know the yeah the, bend but not break exactly 
Yeah, no, that is a great metaphor. I think that is a that's the perfect metaphor for, you know, I think there used to be a flowers don't bend in the rainfall or something, mm -hmm. but that bend but not break mentality is a is a pretty important one. Sure. Um how about the evolution of this? Uh, can you can you tell people how I mean, you're pretty you're a very sophisticated example of adaptability and how has this thing evolved in you? I mean, obviously you've been exposed to this this tool, but can you think mm -hmm. of some things that help to to make it more productive, mm -hmm. more mature? Yeah. I think the first that comes to mind is just the awareness and mm -hmm. and learning it because, you know, it at an early stage of of childhood, maybe even through uh college and 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 certainly through law school, law school I, I hadn't yet experienced Clifton Strengths Finder, so I, I didn't know about my adaptability theme at that time. So when I say I broke things up into chunks, that was just because that's the only way I could get it done. I mean, I just I just did it because that's the only way that it worked. But you know, when I started at Gallup, uh, I've been at Gallup now for over 18 years. But when I started at Gallup was when Don was just starting to develop the Strengths Finder, and and we were testing it and doing all that. But but learning that theme and, and all my themes and, and getting to know what they mean and having it perfectly describe my life is been a big step towards putting it to good use. And so that I think the, the awareness of the theme is, is probably the first big step that, that I had in, in my evolution of, of adaptability. But then also putting it to use in ways uh, that the, the change management is a, is a good uh, yeah a good thing I mean I I can go through change very easily and you know as, as you know all of us Kurt and, and Jim and I know our organization has gone through a lot of changes over the last 10 15 years um, I'm very uh, able to cope with those changes without getting upset without getting uh, worried or, or or dwelling on maybe the negatives and so that I think is where I've been a, a big help to others that I work with is is to be able to to help through that change and be sort of that stable uh, calm again bring that word calm back in that calmness in the eye of the storm maybe of you know there's a lot of things swirling around but I'm that calmness that that attracts people and I think sometimes organizations don't under not everybody in an organization, sometimes organizational leadership do not understand the emotional implications mm -hmm. of change. Exactly. I think that's something, I mean, with your empathy and mm -hmm. I think the combination of those two things, I mean, we talk a lot about emotional intelligence, but I think emotional intelligence becomes very important in times of change because sure. when, when changes, not everybody is quite as, sees changes that much fun <laughs> as you yeah. do, but I think <laughs> to me that is such a good word. Role, I, yeah. Fun fun is a great uh, a great word for it. I mean, again, change change is always difficult, but to me I need change. I, I need things to be constantly evolving and, and have, you know, routines are not my friend. I you know, doing the same thing day after day is not what anything that is attractive to me I want to have change I you know a new email I could be in the middle of a project and have a new email pop up on my uh, my email account and I'll instantly drop whatever I'm doing over here to read the email because again I want I want to jump around to things and having you know the the one that I, I've sometimes heard uh, talked about with adaptability is is a juggler you have a lot of balls in the air at once you can you can keep a lot of a lot of things going at one time and and again I think that hits perfectly home for me yeah so is there any knowledge or skill is there anything that you did that you think that has uh, helped to transform this kind of natural preference you have for change and and that anything that you added to that that made it a productive strength is there anything you know mm. or experiences that you've had that have helped you to to kind of become this kind of more sophisticated change agent, yeah, change I, advocate. You know, I think uh, the, the the only thing that really comes to mind at first is is parenthood, and you know, <laughs> really, especially in our situation. Oh with, yeah, with the the you know the triplets and everything. 
I had to learn uh, and had to really rely on my adaptability going through all the, the things that we were going through as a family, you know, and I, I mentioned the whole childhood thing, but also put right in the middle of that. Just as we found out we were pregnant with our youngest, Nick, we were also relocating from Lincoln to Omaha because Gallup had moved up to Omaha. So, you know, again, you just keep through more and more things. But I think just learning, and I think the other thing is is helping even my children and, and learn and, and teaching them that don't get so worried about the future. Don't get so worried about tomorrow. Think about, you know, enjoy today. Enjoy the fun you're having today and, and experience today and, and huh. uh, you know, that that's a that's one, but you know, as far as as specific, I don't know that I've ever just the taken experience. Part in this, it yeah, sounds like experience. The experience yeah. of you've 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 immersed yourself in experiences of change. Exactly. And to some exactly. degree, that's what's 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 helped you to become more adept in changing environments. Mm-hmm. Here, I had yep. some things down here about uh, how. Uh, how this theme could help parents. I mean, we've had some. So I, I wrote some of these things down here. How adaptability might help you parent. It says living with children is always surprising and unpredictable. Is that true at your house? <laughs> Absolutely. You will thrive in this changing environment. I think that's basically what you said. Part of the way that I have gotten better at this is I've, I've been a dad. Yeah. And, Families yeah. are not predictable, and and yours has really been unpredictable. Probably mm-hmm. more more unpredictable than usual, mm-hmm. and it really has caused you to. And I'm sure there were been moments when there were that that was not easy. It could no. not have been easy. No, and it's certainly that every parent of of a child goes through moments in their lives where it's it's not easy to to deal with any of the changes. But I think overall, I have a better ability to see the, the, you know, to come to that calm spot and, and to see that, okay, this isn't bad, this isn't a, a problem, this isn't trouble, we're going to get through this, it's going to work, everything's going to be okay, tomorrow will come, the sun will rise tomorrow, it'll be fine, I don't need to worry about the sun rising tomorrow because I know it's going to, so I'm just going to live in today and make sure we get through today okay. Yeah. Jim, do you have any questions out there? Oh yeah, lots of questions. Okay, I will say let's, if, let's get some. If we don't get to everybody's questions, we'll take it to the Facebook group. So, if I don't answer your question, or you're listening to the recorded version of this, and you've got questions, just drop that in our, our Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com/groups/strengthsfinder uh, or slash call to coach. Either one of those will uh, will get you in our ask the questions there. Carol Ann wanted to know a little bit more, Scott, about adaptability in you as a child. Hmm. I, I think, you know, really, for me, I, uh, going back to what Kurt and I talked about a little bit ago, it, it just really, I, I wasn't someone who could work on long projects. I, I'm not someone who could sit down at a table for long periods of time. I, I needed to get up and move around. I needed to uh, change focus. I needed, you know, to have, okay, this is great over here, but now I want to go over here and do this. Um, um, kind of like, uh, you know, the distracted by, I, I, some some would say maybe easily distracted. That, that might be a, a sort of a, a, a negative way to look at it, easily distracted. But again, it wasn't that I wasn't paying attention to what was going on that I was working on first. It's just that I needed the, ver- the variety. I needed multiple things going on. Did your parents kind of ever force you to try to force you to focus on things? I'm just... Or did they give you the freedom to kind of be successful in in the way that you were kind of wired here? I, I think it was more of the latter. I, ah. I, there, there really wasn't a lot of uh, forcing of of you need to you know bear down and focus on this or you need to you know do whatever. It was more you know I I, I never I never were really a, a bad student. You know, you know I I got decent grades and and I was able to. You know, as as you mentioned, Kurt go through not only undergrad but then also law school, and and was uh, on dean's list in in both uh, places. And successful, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So a, a successful student, um, but I had to do it in my own way, not not in the way that maybe the school system would traditionally want me to do it, or the way that other kids might have done it. I, huh. I had to do it my way. Yeah. Um, Kurt, this is a question for you. Annette had asked, are we born with adaptability or does it depend on our lifestyle? 
<laughs> it's kind of that nature nurture question, I, I, and I think it's both. Uh, I think it's um, I think there's a probably a genetic nature, a, a genetic creation of these patterns within us. But I think sometimes the environment. I mean, when you say lifestyle, I think to some degree it's about the environment, and and I think to some degree. You know, it sounds like Scott lived in a, a family that gave him some freedom to kind of go with what worked here, and he did, there was not a lot of pressure. If he would have had a lot of pressure at a young age to become something different, he might not have been as adaptable. He might have, but it. But you think about what would have been lost when you when you see this kind of individual who has this tremendous capacity to live and, and influence changing environments and live in multiple kind of settings like this, I mean, it's a good thing that they didn't. So I don't know if I can say categorically it's, mm -hmm. I think it's some combination of both. Uh, mm -hmm. Who someone is genetically and who someone is, what their early environment I th is, both of those things really shape who we become. And um, and I think it's best when 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 parents to some degree try to customize their approach to their kids based on who the kids are. Sure. And now, you've, I, got, you've got four kids, so they're probably not all the same, I'm guessing. No, definitely <laughs> not. They are very, very different kids, and they require different ways of parenting to each one. You know, there's obviously some similarities, but at the, at the end of the day, um, my daughter is a very different person than... Uh, uh, Palmer, who's our, our firstborn of the three, um, she she's a very different person. They get to the same outcome. Uh, they 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 both are very good students. They love school. They get to the same outcome, but the way that they get there is very very different. Do any of your kids get there like you got there? Um, I think uh, uh, yeah. I think probably my son Hogan is is more like me in that sense he he wants to get things done fast he wants to you know and that's that's one thing too that maybe I didn't mention was I wanted to get my work done fast I I, I wanted to do it get it done and move on to something else do something else yeah exactly. yeah and and I think he's a lot like that he likes uh -huh. to he likes to I know this I want to just get it done and then I want to move on to another another project or I want to move on to some other some other experience mm -hmm. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. good Kevin had asked the question for you, Scott. How do you see your arranger responsibility and adaptability meeting with your harmony? <laughs> wow, I'm gonna put all at least four of them together right there, all in one question. Huh? You bet. You bet. Um, Bring it together. Yeah, really. I, okay, so uh, you know, Kurt and I talked about this a little bit a, a few days ago, but the 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 adaptability piece of it I think drives a lot of it, but in the in the trying to figure out the, the, the process of how we're going to solve something or how we're going to get to an end. The adaptability makes me jump right in. The harmony that's in there allows me to build those relationships and keep those relationships going and, and, and give them trust. There's, there's, a, there's a piece that, you know, Kurt and I talked about a little bit that we haven't brought up here, but it's a, an element of trust. I can, people have a lot of trust in me because I, again, I have that calm. Part of that's your integrity too. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and the integrity might also be part of that responsibility piece too mm -hmm. and bringing that theme in. And when I take on, a project or when I take on solving something for someone, I I take personal responsibility for it. I, I want to do it. So that adaptability lets me know, okay, if I'm going down this path and solving it this way and we hit a roadblock, I can instantly change and move over here and find a way around that roadblock and find a way to get that done. And so the the you know the harmony builds the the trust and the relationship side, the responsibility makes me take ownership of it, but the adaptability lets me get it done. And, and, and the arranger is what helps me plan, you know, the five different routes that I'm going to use. I'm going to try the first route, the most preferred route to get a problem solved. But the arranger has allowed me to plan out a couple other routes in case that one sees a roadblock. I think what your adaptability is, it's, it's, it's your language, and this is brand mm -hmm. new language for me around adaptability, is this jumping in. Mm-hmm. I'm yep. willing to jump into the water. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that it's a new experience. Hey, it's a new experience. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna jump in, and then you might want to jump out later. But you, <laughs> some people, it's it's similar probably to activator. Sure. It, it it look it could look like activator. It's the initiation. Mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm willing to jump into a new experience, a new situation, and and so that's that's a really insight for me, just hearing you talk about it. Yeah, and and I I agree, and but one of the things we always talk sometimes about balconies and basements, and and one of the basements do. of that jumping <laughs> that jumping in is that you know if you think of it in a setting of a pool, you may not know how deep that water is, or you may not know you know exactly how you're going to swim once you jump in. Um, so sometimes I can jump into things and I start working on something, but maybe because I've been so adaptable and I've I've tried to let's let's do it quick let's go fast I sometimes don't take enough time to plan and to organize and then I have to take a step back bring in the arranger and start saying okay let's let's think this through a little bit more rather than just go 60 75 miles an hour right from the start let's take it a little slower and ramp up to that speed yeah I think activator would have a similar basement mm -hmm. you know this it's, it's, it's a little bit impulsive yeah, kind of spontaneous, yeah. impulsive words. Have I think there's a spontaneity to uh, to adaptability, kind of sure. real time, kind of good. Mm -hmm. So, Kurt, let me ask with that in mind. So, Annette and Eileen in the chat have a similar question. So, I'll, par I'll paraphrase them. But if you're low in adaptability, and and you kind of uh, alluded to this with Activator, you could use Activator to look like. Are there other themes that might jump in there if you low adaptability you might be in a situation where you need it yeah what themes could you use to compensate for yes. low adaptability yeah I think activator would be a, a good theme to do that I I think uh, individual is I think as I said I think themes like uh, empathy uh, if you're aware of people emotional awareness can help you know where to jump in I think there's a co they both have an awareness to them uh, individualization I think is another theme that that has some things in common with adaptability in that they both love diversity uh, individualization loves the diversity of people people are different people with adaptability really like a variety or differences of experience I think another theme that might work here with adaptability could be learner I think that's one of uh, that's another people that have learner like like new information they they're they're comfortable with changing ideas and so there's a there's a little bit of overlap there as well so those might be some suggestions as, of other themes that you might rely on when you need to get into new situations that could help you or even even woo <laughs> I mean your ability to kind of take to be new people could also help you because that's really what's about it's about change what are themes that help you with change I think adaptability and arranger are two two of the great ones but I think there are some other ones as well mm -hmm. Scott anything you want to add to that from just personal experience I, I no, I just that I agree with it I mean that's the way it's played out with me I mean I don't have learner very high uh, that new information doesn't you know that doesn't spark me. Um, the the seeking out new information does that's not very high for me. I think it's learners in the 30s for me. Um, but like Kurt said, the the adaptability and the arranger piece are what brings it for me. And I think what we get to new in different ways. Scott jumps into new experiences and he gains new information. Mm -hmm. Learners jump into new places where there's new information and they they form new relationships they have different experiences because of their conceptual attraction to to newness so yep. that, this is a really this is my learner at work here this is a new <laughs> area of kind of exploration just around this whole idea of change and how themes contribute to to the experience of change the management of change the leading of change mm -hmm. Well, and we get some real-time feedback. So Annette, who had that question, said, well, it looks like she's going to lean on her learner a little bit. For, <laughs> okay, for good. That. Terrific. So, yeah, good Annette, idea. Well, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, and we kind of all know this, but you don't, you don't want everybody in the world to have all the same themes. We need people that are strong in all the other themes to, to really make everything work together. If everybody had adaptability in their, you know, top five or, or so, it just... It, it wouldn't be as as good of a mix. We need people with all those others. So embrace what you have and and manage what you don't. No, right on. But there is that time when you're forced into a situation exactly. and you you need the theme and you don't have it. I as I've done this series, one of the things I've learned is finding other themes that get close and then and then and then aiming it right. The the strategy of getting that thing aimed and saying, all right, I'm going to depend on my 
Or, like we were talking about earlier, Scott, there are times I need to lean on your responsibility, right? I'm doing yep. some things, and for me, you know, I'm just activating, <laughs> activating, 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 which isn't always great. And so, Scott, you've been awesome. I run things through you. Hey, Scott, what do you think about this? You've got history here. You've got that responsibility piece. We talked about the integrity. And you've just been really good for me. It's a check and balance system uh, from, from that standpoint. So it's been helpful. Yep. Last and question. Think, oh, go ahead, Kurt. I think this is what we're going to talk more about when we get into theme dynamics. Uh, we've got a book coming out about that and who knows, maybe a webcast about this. We can spend more time dealing with this, the dynamics between these themes and kind of clarifying that for people. Yeah, I know. There's been a lot of the chat in the chat room today about that. They're all excited about, hey, because we've been talking about these partnerships, and so they're, that, that is coming. That's the, the next iteration of Theme Thursday. We've got to get through all 34 first, and we'll do that. <laughs> Wrap those up and then jump in the dynamic. Last question from Matt, and he says, I work, with, I work in a small office, about 11 team members, and seven of the team members have adaptability in their top five, and nobody has any strengths in the influencing domain. How do I help them plan and think about the future as well as preventing them from bouncing off of each other? It sounds like a little bit of a reaction there. As they try to adapt to each other and the environment. Kurt, why don't you, any, any thoughts there? Yeah, it, it's hard for me to answer that question without getting some more, I mean, knowing what, what, what they're trying to accomplish. I don't necessarily think every group has to have influence until I know what they what they're being expected to accomplish so it, it'd be card that might be one I could answer better kind of offline to get a little, a little more information in order to not leading them in the right direction okay. good and, and Matt so maybe you can drop that in our Facebook group and we can start a discussion around that on the Facebook site facebook.com slash group slash uh, strength finder and, and it may be here maybe I do have something I, I it, it when you think about Scott and his his studying, I mean, it, it, it he 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 got to the outcome in a different way. And I it seems like I'm saying this more and more to managers. Are you willing to give make sure people know what you want them to accomplish, but then give them some freedom to get it done in a manner what might seem like chaos to you could be productive, and I don't know if it is or not. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes people are not worried about the results. They're sometimes more worried about the style of how, when you talk about bumping into each other, that might be kind of normal for people with high adaptability. They're all jumping around, and I'd want to know, are they getting done what needs to be done? That's that's the, the main question I'd want to know more about. So, okay. All right, uh, Kurt, with that, uh, let's wrap it. Okay. I just really want to thank Scott. Scott, you have been just a, uh, a, a great example of what adaptability looks like in its most mature form. And I, it was just a, an honor to kind of hear your story and the way that this, this uh, pattern has evolved in you and has been, become a very productive part, not only of the Gallup organization and all the, the important roles that you play here, but also the important role that you play in your family as a, as a dad to four kids and uh, the kind of uh, uh, impact that you're having on those lives and uh, the way that you've met the challenges that come with that in such a calm, uh, caring way. So, so thank you. I want to close by reading a song here that I think I'm not going to sing it I'm just going to read the words <laughs> I'm kind of a ch I'm kind of a child of the 60s and uh, I don't know if you remember the new Christy minstrels <laughs> probably <Still> not <laughs> uh, but how about John Denver yeah yeah he, he had this song it, it really wasn't his song I think it was a guy by the name of Randy Springer who wrote for the new Christy minstrels but it's a song called today so I'm just going to read this Today, while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I'll taste your strawberries, I'll drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows shall all pass away, ere I forget all the joy that is mine today. I think that's kind of at the core of what makes adaptability great. The people who live in the moment and are present in the moment and are adaptable and flexible in the moment. And Scott, you've been a great example of that.
Well, thank you very much. This has been great uh, joining you guys on this. Uh, Jim alluded to, I've, I've been in his chair many a times for this and other uh, webcasts that we do, and so it's it's kind of fun being on the other end of it now and being a guest on it. So thank you. And, a, and you did it perfectly just like you do all the other roles. <laughs> thank you. You are adaptable. <laughs> thank you very much. Indeed. And Scott, thanks for me for partnering with me on these. It's great to have a backup. I did these for a few months without a backup, and it was nice to be able to take a Thursday or a Friday off and, uh, or be <laughs> out of town or be sick or whatever yep. and uh, yep. so I appreciate you doing that as well no problem. And everything to do it. Heather has done as well right uh, in, in jumping in and helping us with uh, with Call the Coach and uh, and these as yep. well so thanks again I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available and so if this is your first webcast with us you'll want to get a piece of paper and a pen and stop the video for a second or the audio because we're going to give you a whole bunch of links here that you will want to write down uh, just a few they're very super important everything's at our Gallup Strength Center so just go to Gallup Strength Center all one word dot com and if you have questions or comments you can send those to us in, e in an email coaching at gallup dot com don't have to be a coach to use that link if you just want to that's just the email address that we use and uh, send those questions in we'd love to get them for you you can catch the recorded audio and video of this show plus all the past ones I mentioned earlier we have a bunch including our the links to our Facebook page and YouTube page and iTunes links and RSS feeds and iPhone apps and we got tons of resources for you if you're not taking advantage of them shame on you get out there and take care of those coaching at gallup.com that's the site coaching dot gallop dot com uh, on that same site we also have a meetup tab and we're trying to gather as we get larger we're trying to get small we're trying to gather everybody by cities we have about 20 cities here in the United States plus three international cities that we are doing meetups in we'd love to have you a part of those or maybe you're already doing a meetup and we don't know about it go out to coaching dot com and click on the meetup tab and actually Scott helped me build that page way back in the day <laughs> he was buying that meetup that meetup page and yep. uh, has since transferred it to somebody else, but we'd love to have that information. We're trying to get folks together around the world. Check on that page. Find a meetup near you. Love to get you involved in some of those things as well. If you found this helpful, please share it. Lots of different ways to do it socially. Get Help us get the word out. And for thanks for joining us today. We'll look forward to the next Theme Thursday. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everyone.